global growth certainly has, hold, has held up somewhat better than we had feared. Probably we're not too far from the bottom. Formally, our forecast would be that fourth quarter global GDP will be the low print. That'll be a little bit below 3%, something like 2.8% Q on Q. But there have been some beneficial tailwinds, and in particular, isn't just the removal of sort of the Japan shock from the first half data, but commodity prices have by and large settled down. It doesn't mean they've gone back to lower levels, but settling back at the same, uh, uh, settling at a similar level for some time does uh, tend to, to eliminate the negative shock that you get from that side. Formally, our global GDP forecast for 2011 is unchanged compared to when we last spoke. That's 3.6% year on year. Within that, that's developed country growth, rich country growth of only about 1.4. And for the emerging markets, the BRIC countries, South Africa, others, growing about 6, 6.3. For next year, we've cut our forecast for the globe by about four tenths. So we had hoped for a small increase, a growth rate of about 3.7. Now we think something like 3.3 .3 is more likely. Developed countries, We've cut the forecast. We had hoped they'd be growing about 2. Now it's about flat to this year, about 1.4. Somewhat better for the US, somewhat weaker for Europe. Emerging markets, some slow down as well, about 5.5% on the emerging market side. So the failure to come up with some sort of deal or some sort of solution to the euro area crisis to date has meant a couple things. One, you're seeing a significant deleveraging in the banking system, and that's placing more pressure on consumers and banks. You're seeing businesses and consumers, the confidence of those individuals fall very significantly on the fear that something terrible is about to happen to them. And of course, we constantly talk about in South Africa, if consumers aren't confident and businesses aren't confident, there's no investment and there's no consumption and it becomes in some ways self-reinforcing. Self we expect, as I mentioned earlier, we expect that the euro area will show negative economic growth in the fourth quarter not negative for all countries, Germany's doing, uh, is proving to be particularly resilient, but negative growth in the fourth quarter, and fairly substantial, about minus 1.4 on an annualized basis. In the first quarter of next year, another minus, that's two quarters, that's a formal recession. Even into the, the middle of next year, our best guess is that the economies of Europe are probably flat, 0% growth. So this is a real recession. The problems and the solution now, as far as I can tell, <laughs> kind of quite obscure. We've, we've gotten a long way beyond where it was easy for us to understand the problems of Europe because you had one country or another country that had an awful lot of debt and was going to struggle to pay it back and because of that interest rates were rising and that was making it more. We've gone a long way beyond a sort of those simple explanations here, those simple solutions. As a headline, Right, particularly as we went into the end of last week with the uh, European Union summit, you know, no silver bullet looked likely. No bazooka, which is the new tortured phrase, no bazooka looked likely. It misunderstands the real depth and breadth of this problem. Right? It's disappointing for sure that there's no treaty, but you know what? There has been some important progress in, in, in our mind. But let's, let's bear in mind, the size of the problem is substantial. It's very intractable. In the best of circumstances, this is not something that's going to take weeks or months, and certainly wasn't going to take two days to sort out. This is a problem that's going to take years to work its way through the system. And so the kinds of solutions that we're going to have are kinds of solutions that have near-term com near -term components and medium-term components and long-term components. And our sense is that we got some of that in last week's summit. So there's three broad areas that I think are quite important to pull from December 9th. One is around uh, a, a new fiscal framework. And certainly, it looks like we have broad agreement, not only within the Eurozone members themselves, but through the broader EU, X, of course, uh, the UK and, and one or two others, of sort of a, a new set of fiscal rules and maybe a, a new push towards uh, a more legalistic framework in order to try to ensure that countries do the right thing today to ensure their sustainability going forward. Critically, it's also more money. Right? So if the first one, fiscal rules, talks to us about the medium and long-term part of the solution, more money talks to us very much about the short and short-medium version of this solution. <coughs> so uh, the ESM has been, uh, sorry, has been moved forward to the middle of this year from the beginning of next year. 
there's talk about European policymakers through probably their central banks providing more money to the IMF. It sounds kind of strange at first pass that countries that are suffering fiscal problems are going to provide money to the IMF, but that money allows the IMF to then lend back into problematic countries in Europe. That's something like 200 billion euros. And there is the expectation or hope, though not yet certainty, that other G20 met members might further add to that total. So we're talking about 700, 700 billion plus of money that wasn't available, that might be available uh, fairly soon. And then the third part that I think is real important out of December 9th is that there's more coordination. And even at a very basic level, you now have agreement that the euro area heads are going to meet every single month. And while that's frustrating at some level as analysts, and it's going to provide lots of column inches on your side, the simple fact of the matter is the heads are going to meet. And if you're a head of one of the countries like Italy or Spain and you've promised to do X and you haven't done it, well, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable. It's not pretty uncomfortable every couple months, every couple quarters. It's pretty uncomfortable every four weeks. And so that kind of moral suasion, I think, matters quite a lot.